All right, continuing on. This is my Nelson P200 Fast Reverse Big Gun. I got this off a guy on Facebook. Um, when I got it, it was uh, it was locked up because the bearings and the base here need to be replaced. I had it rebuilt. They done all the gaskets and everything, the bearings in the base. I think they replaced a couple of the bump stops there. Um, this one has a ring nozzle. Although this is a custom ring nozzle or a custom wash that I got from a hardware store because even with the smallest nozzle on this that would fit in here, my pumps would not run. It's too big. So this isn't also a fast reverse design. This is a little bit different from the other ones. This one has a deflector on the top. It's basically the same way this drive arm moves up and down will end up, well now when it hits that veined drive spoon there, it will hit this and go to the left, just like all the other guns, it's basically the same. Now when it hits the stop, this one does not have the stops however. I got it without and I'm still looking for some. Um, but basically, when the gun hits the stop, it will bend lip pulling this in See, I'm moving this. It's moving that. What happens is it'll hit that and it'll move it, and this will pull down. And once it gets pulled down, it'll hit that. That creates, you know, that creates energy, pushing it off to the right, which will reverse the gun back. And then once it hits the other stop, it'll pull it out. This spring here will help in pulling it out because that needs to be there, or this will sit in the stream all the time. Now this is meant for, I think for you have to have at least 60 PSI. And I think um, at least 250 gallons a minute with the taper bore and 230 gallons a minute with the uh, ring nozzle. So now this is a little bit different from the, all the other ones as this one has a braking system on the base. It's these bolts. And this push down on the disc to create force. It's the same brake as the others, which will create a counter force helping the gun to distribute water evenly and not whip back so quick. Now this area that I covered here is the spreader. That's where the spreader nozzle goes. Unfortunately on this, the, the nozzle where the nozzle screws in, the threads are gummed up or destroyed and I was not able to thread a plug into there to keep water from shooting out. So I just put the, uh, some uh, Permatex in there or whatever to seal it. Now if I ever get in, if I ever get a bigger pump than what I have, I'm gonna have to take it in and have the threads redone and then put a plug in there because I'm not sure if I get a bigger pump if this is gonna be able to hold it. It might, I don't know. So, the 200 guns, they go up, like I said, the 200 guns can go up to about 130 PSI to about 1,200, 1,300 gallons a minute if they use the biggest nozzle if it's coming out and they have a pump, a bright pump to drive it. So this one is the one that I ran. I do have a video of this running on my system. It's running on two pumps. It's not very impressive, but it does run. And it's because of that special not a ring here with a smaller output to help try to get some pressure back. So, now this is just like all the other ones if you take the stops off and go for a circle. Um, I believe that the stops were taken off of this when I, before I got it and it might have been used for something else. Maybe because the gun locked up and they decided to pull parts from it, I'm not sure. But this is a flange mount, meaning you have to have a bolt. When you mount this on the cart or whatever, wherever you're going to mount it, usually it just bolts on with these and you're ready to go. So, but I have it going to a two inch because that's what my stand is to a two inch um, NPT. So these can come with either NPT or flange. This is flange because it's got the bolts. So I used to watch these as a kid and think they were really cool because of all the power that they had. And the range that these have is just crazy. I've seen some that were sitting all the way back in the field. In fact, I have a video of one that I got in Michigan a few years ago. That was all the way back in the field and getting across the street. So it had to be getting every little bit of 300 feet. So these were really impressive when I watched them. Although my parents never let me near them. And I did not know that 
the reverse force on these can actually kill you if they hit you. So you definitely do not definitely do not want to be one near one of these when they're operating. You got to stand back because they are very dangerous. I had picked this up from there. This is a 200 series um, body and brass cap for a ring nozzle that would fit on a gun like this. Basically, you would take this ring off here, this cap, and then your nozzle would fit. So basically you would take the cap off, the nozzle would go inside here, the ring, and then you would screw this back on and tighten it up, and then you're ready to go. You just put on the gun and you're ready. I had hoped that this would work on my Rainbird 205G, but between Nelson and Rainbird, they changed the thread design, and this is actually longer than a Rainbird, meaning that if I used it on my 205, it would get in the way of the reverse deflector and it wouldn't work. So... I do plan on getting some stops as soon as I can find someone with a broken 200 like this that I could buy the stops off of or just buy the broken gun and pull them off myself. But that's pretty much the specs of it. It's These are the Nelson 200 is considered Nelson's biggest gun. It's a high volume gun. Like I said, up to 1,300 gallons a minute, about 300 feet or so in range. And I've seen a lot of them on Travelers watering fields and stuff, like fields of beans and corn and stuff. I've got many videos of them on my channel. I have video of this one running off my setup, which it works. It's pretty impressive. It's not, not like what you'd normally see out in the field as far as performance goes, because those are being ran by big air, ag irrigation pumps, whether electric or PTO ran off an engine. And I just have two small 7.5 horsepower transfer pumps in series. I had to go and get this smaller nozzle here because it would not run even with the smallest nozzle in that I doubt it would run because I tried it on my Rainbird and it just didn't work so if I'm going to run this with the original nozzle it came in I need to get myself a big ag irrigation pump and a cart because the bigger pump you have the more pressure you have and the more force just create and this would not stand up on my stand I guarantee it would flip as soon as I turned it on I bet it would flip over so now, I did manage to adjust, you know, there's these adjustments here. There's some to have this kind of sit in the stream a little bit more. So I'm running it on my setup. It helps create a little bit more backwards or reverse force to help reverse the gun back. Because if this is in the stream more, it's going to create more force and therefore pushing the gun back faster. So... I mean, like I said, I still see a lot of these old fast reverse guns being used, not so much on pivots, but more on travelers. So, I still see them out in Michigan. I see some of them around here. It's not very many around here, but in Michigan, I see them all over. And with the prices on a new SR200 gun being about $4,000, the farmers will use these until they break and can't be repaired anymore. The Valley dealer that I go to... The Valley dealer that I go to... Um, still repairs these, but it cannot be missing any of the cast on parts like this, this, or any of these other parts. They cannot replace the cast on parts because they're not made by Nelson anymore. You can still get the bearings, the seals, the gaskets, the bumper stops, all that stuff. But if the drive arm broke, if the reverse spoon here broke, if this cam broke, or any of this other stuff, I would not be able to get it. Because they are just not made anymore. The only way I'd be able to get it is buying a broken gun and swapping the, and maybe taking the gun and this over to the dealer to have them swap it out. I did manage to happen to get a hold of a Nelson, um, a book or a, a, like a kind of like a maintenance guide that tells me how to take this gun apart all the way down to the inside to do the bearings and the seals and everything. So one of these days, I will maybe try, if I need to rebuild one of these, maybe I will just buy one that's broken and try to attempt to do it myself. The only part that will be hard is getting the bearing out. I think I will need a bearing press to do that. Being that, um, those are a bit hard to get out and you have to do it carefully so you don't end up, you know, scoring or messing up the bearings. So 
It's the same with up here. There's a bearing on this side of the gun. There's bearings here, you know, so this moves and this moves freely. So, so that's pretty much it on this. I just thought I'd, you know, make a video then have this catalog out to try to show you um, a little bit about these guns. Just try to show how they work. And when I put these videos up, I'll try to include links of each gun to where you can see them working. Um, and I'm with, for this one, I've only got one video of this actually working. The other videos that I have are of other people's, like ones I've seen out driving around. So, I'll, uh, so that's pretty much that. One day, if I get the other one out, my 150, I'll get it up here and I'll make a video of it too. So, thanks for watching.